Since the Evercade was first unveiled in 2019, it's been a handheld that I've had my eye on. Instead of just being a cheap knockoff system that has a bunch of unlicensed games on it, the Evercade system does things a bit differently. It's a retro handheld that has officially licensed games from companies like Interplay with Earthworm Jim and Namco with Splatterhouse 2 and 3. It's a cartridge collecting system as well, so it has its own proprietary library of games, plus it even has new games from companies like Pico Interactive and Mega Cat Studios. Well, the system will be releasing on April 9th, but the fine folks over at Evercade actually sent me one to check out in advance so we could see if this is a system that you guys would be interested, to see if this is a system that actually does what it sets out to do. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's jump into the world of the Evercade system, see what I like about it, and see what I maybe don't like about it. All right, so let's unbox our Evercade system. I'm definitely pretty stoked to check this out. You can see here by the branding, this is the premium pack. Now this system will retail for $99.99. There is also a standard pack. The only difference is the standard pack costs $79.99, but only comes with one cartridge. This one comes with three different cartridges. We have a Data East Collection 1, an Atari Collection 1, and an Interplay Collection 1. So the box is pretty cool. You know, you can see all the different games that are available in the premium pack pack as well. Uh, everything I think looks pretty nice honestly. It's not very cheap packaging, you know, a lot of things, a lot of retro stuff you see nowadays has very, very shoddy packaging, but this actually looks uh, pretty decent. So let's open up the system and I will say the system is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. This is about the size of a PSP, which is what they said it would be, but you know, it's kind of one of those things where you have to see it to believe it. But yeah, this is this is a pretty beefy system. It has a really good weight to it too. Uh, the D-pad feels very nice. We have a menu button, a select button, and a start button. A, B, X, and Y. Trigger buttons as well. Pretty good looking system, you know? I was kind of afraid that maybe it was gonna be like one of those cheap Chinese systems where, you know, there's not a lot of love and care gone into it, just a random mold. But this actually looks and feels very good in your hands. It feels like a very sturdy product. Like, I'm not gonna break it in half with my hands. So, so far so good, I'm, I'm digging this. I like the big screen as well. Let's see what else comes in the box here. We have a quick start guide, which will give us some instructions, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I could figure it out. And we have some of the cartridges here. So like I said, this does come with three different cartridges. We have the Interplay Collection, which is, of course, has games like Earthworm Jim on it, Boogerman, Clay Fighter. We have the Atari Collection 1, which has Ninja Golf on it. Ninja Golf is the only Atari 7800 game that matters. It has a bunch of different 7800 and 2800 games. And we have the Data East Collection 1 here as well. And uh, Evercade was kind enough to send me actually all of the cartridges that are available at the launch of the system. There are 10 cartridges in total. We have the Atari Collection 2, the Namco Museum Collection 1, the Pico Collection one, which is really cool because Pico Interactive basically takes games that are not released in certain regions or unreleased in general, and then finishes them up and releases them. And you get a lot of different games on this cartridge. This actually has 20 different games on it. Each cartridge has a set number of games on it. Some have more than others. You have uh, the Namco Museum Collection 2, which has Splatterhouse 2 and 3 on it, the Technos Collection, and then we have the Interplay Collection 2, and finally, we have the Mega Cat Studios Collection Volume 1. And Mega Cat Studios is cool because they actually make new games for old systems. So all of these games are on here are actually new games that have released for 8 and 16-bit systems since those systems have been retired. Now, I have opened up the um, cartridge of one of these because I want to show you guys these. The cartridges are $20 a piece, which honestly, that's that's pretty cheap. Like, if, if they were crappy stuff, I could sort of see it. But you get a nice case. You get a nice collectible case and you get a color manual. The color manual will show you how to play these games, tell you a bit about the games as well, which I think is absolutely awesome. Definitely a collector's item. That's what this system is going for, a collector's item. And then we have the cartridge itself. This is a proprietary cartridge here and, you know, pretty nice. A good little size. It has the cartridge name on the back of it as well if you were confused about which cartridge you have. So I like this. I like how, I love the boxes of these. We have the spine as well. It's a very collectible sort of system. It's something that you'll want to buy games for just to have a collection of them. I planned on picking up, you know, some of these 
games to check them out as well but like I said they were kind enough to send me the whole collection over to review but really what matters is how does this system play you know they say you get about four to five hours of battery life you can hook it up to your television as well but how does the system play how's the emulation on it how does everything look and you can also hook it up to your TV as well so how does that go so that's what we're gonna find out now I'm gonna spend a couple days with this system really get the ins and outs of it record some footage for you guys and then we'll give you guys my final thoughts all right, so we're going to kick things off with the Interplay Collection 1. You put your cartridge in there, you slap it down, it fits nice and well. There's our power button, and we will turn on the system. Nice little screen on it, I have to say. That's a very nice screen. Now, I'm going with the Interplay Collection 1. Ooh, fancy. Look at this. Very nice. I like that. I'm going with the Interplay Collection 1 because of Earthworm Jim. That's a game I'm very familiar with and I'm very well known uh, when it comes to that game. You can see we have a battery indicator on the system as well. And these are the games of the Interplay Collection 1. We have Battle Chess, Boogerman, a pick and a flick adventure, Clay Fighter, Earthworm Jim, Incantation and Titan. Now, these are going to be various versions of the game. So, like for the Double Dragons on the Technos collection, which we'll take a look at next, that will have the NES version of Double Dragon 1 and 2, and then it has Super Double Dragon on there as well. So, I'm assuming this is the Genesis version of the Interplay or the uh, Earthworm Gym, hopefully, because I mean, that's the good version. The sound sounds really good good it sounds it sounds like it should and that's um that's important so you can actually do uh four by three and 16 by nine on this system uh we have the volume controls here on the bottom let's crank it all the way up not too loud um you know but i can definitely hear it you also have a headphone jack on here as well i don't know why you would want to do like four by three on this but i guess if you're a sadistic person you can but let's hop into it let's see how the game plays because I mean, if it doesn't play good, then the system is kind of pointless, but let's check it out. Okay. It's actually insanely smooth. Um, it, it is a little bit weird because you got to get used to the button layout. Um, obviously, the games are going to be on different buttons, so this is my jump, this is my whip, and this is my gun. But the music sounds spot on, and like... It looks great on this screen. This screen is actually very impressive. And if you've ever played, get off me. If you've ever played Earthworm Jim, like the sound is one of the most important things about the game because the sound is so good in it, like the music and whatnot. It's definitely, it's definitely an ap accurate representation of the audio in the game. Cal launched. I will say it's a little bit, it's a little bit weird to get used to the controls. Um, is there any sort of way we can change the controls on this? Because that would actually be good. Looking, bringing up the menu button, you can see that we have save slots and um, that you can save the game to. You can load your game. So that's very cool. Very nice little modern touch. Uh, you can't change the controls, but you can do uh, full screen and original size on here if you wanted to do 16 by 9 because you're a weirdo. But no, I'm just kidding. It's fine if you want to do that. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit weird to get used to the controls, but I feel like once you get used to the controls, like everything is fine. It sounds so good on here too. I'm, I'm honestly, first impressions, I'm very impressed with this. Like, I didn't think that it would be as, as good as it has been so far. Uh, the system is very comfortable in your hand as well. I do wish there was a little bit of a contour on the back to sort of grip your fingers, but um, you know, just a minor nitpick there just something personal some people might have might hate that kind of stuff i used to have a friend his name was adam and uh his girlfriend would always yell at him and whenever earthworm jim makes that ow sound um it reminds me of his girlfriend yelling i ate him i ate him stop it that's just a, a little weird anecdote well earthworm jim looks and plays great on this so let's check out another cartridge and see what's up with that all right, so now we're taking a look at the Technos cartridge. We have Crash and the Boys Street Challenge, Double Dragon 2, Double Dragon, Renegade, River City Ransom, Super Double Dragon, Super Spike Volleyball, and Super Dodgeball on here. This is definitely a cartridge I like, and that's one thing I do want to mention about the cartridges in general. It's pretty much your mileage 
Oh yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. I'm gonna lower it a little bit, but that does sound good. I love, I love the NES Double Dragon soundtrack. It's, it's so damn good to me. Um, one thing I do want to mention is your mileage is gonna kind of vary on the various cartridges because of the fact that. You know, some of these games, they might just not interest you. Like, I'm not super big on classic Atari stuff because it was before my time. So, you know, at 20 bucks, it's kind of worth the plunge if you're just, you know, curious about those games. But that's that's one thing that, you know, is important to keep in mind is the fact that, you know, your cartridge... Um, output is going to be pretty much based on whether or not you're a fan of those games or those games sound interesting to you. I definitely prefer some cartridges to other cartridges just based on the um, game output. But you know, like I said, that's what's kind of cool about the system is, you know, they're so cheap. They're 20 bucks. So it's not like it's going to break the bank. Um, you could see it is double dragon to or double dragon. It looks good. It sounds good. Colors look right. Lindas are getting beat up. Da -na, da -na, da -da -na -na -na. I, th like this is such a great song and like the nes version of it is just so much better than the arcade version when it comes to this song i don't care what anyone says uh the d-pad um the d-pad actually feels very nice um it doesn't it, you know it's got a good stiffness to it but it, it has enough wiggle in it to where you can move around you know pretty much however you want to move hitting those high notes good on here one thing I do want to show you guys, it's very easy to uh, use your save state. You simply just press A and then you have your save state. So let's just go over here and then we can load our save state. You only get one save state, it seems like. Oh no, you actually, excuse me. Wow, you have a lot of save states here. So uh, yeah, you have um, a ton of, of states here to, to make various... Um, save states so if you mess up a lot or you just want to make a bunch of save states you can do that so that's very cool so this is good like this is this is playing the games how i want them to everything is looking nice everything is playing nice everything feels good uh let's take i want to take a look at the instruction manual for this game just because i'm such a fan of the double dragon stuff and then we'll take a look at another cartridge we'll hook a cartridge up to the television and see how that works and then yeah we'll move right along Here's a look at the instruction booklet for Double Dragon, the Technos collection. It gives a little history about Technos as a company, which I think is really cool. And then you have about the game, you have some tips here, you have the control scheme for it, since each individual game does have its own control scheme. I really like this sort of stuff. This really makes it stand out over, you know, a standard, just cheap, crappy Walmart system that you pick up or one of those uh, AliExpress systems because it shows that they care. They care about these retro games. They actually care about the history of these games and what went into these games and being able to officially license these games. So this is this. these are the little things that are definitely making this system uh, a real winner so far in my opinion but like I said we're gonna check out another cartridge here so let's get into it all right so now we're taking a look at the Pico interactive cartridge like I said this cartridge has 20 games on it so there there's a lot of games on here you've got role-playing games you got platformer you got a bunch of role-playing games you have games that I never heard of Iron Commando is actually a game that we've reviewed on this channel before way back in the day from Pico Interactive. Jim Power is another really interesting sort of game. You got a shooter game, you got Nightshade. Nightshade is one of my favorite NES games. So that is very cool to see it on there. A complete hidden gem on the NES. I've actually done a full video on Nightshade as well. Power Punch 2, which was kind of the sequel to Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, except it was like in outer space and kind of weird. Radical Rex, Switchblade, The Humans, Tin Head, Top Racer, which of course is um, Top Gear. So yeah, this, this is a very, busty cartridge i guess would be the word for it robust that's the actual word for it but we could say busty as well let's hop into iron commando because that is the game i am pretty familiar with on this and it's actually a really fun beat-em-up game that i i don't know why it never saw like a big release on the super nintendo this is a super nintendo game um and a really fun game honestly it has a good soundtrack as well just a, a really cool game like you'll see once we once we get into it here that it's a, it's a game that should have gotten you know it should have been a big success i feel because i really enjoy it yes if you remember my review of this game you remember i was like this is the papa rose song last resort this is my last resort. This is a super fun game. And you can tell 
there's a little bit of a different audio um, on this because it's a Super Nintendo game. Super Nintendo games kind of had that little different audio sound to them compared to, you know, Genesis and uh, NES games. Uh, whereas Genesis games kind of had that farty noise to them. Some Super Nintendo games kind of had a bit of a more muffled noise. But yeah, this is a really fun game and probably one of the best games on the collection. Even though there's a, there's a, honestly a lot of really good games on this on this collection here. So everything that we have played is playing how it should. Everything feels really good. Everything looks really good. Everything sounds really good. The save states are working fine. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this system so far. I really didn't know quite what to expect. It seemed like they were putting a lot of time and care into this system, but you know how companies can be, you know, is it going to be a cash grab? Is it going to and is the end product going to be, you know, what retro fans want and what people are going to be looking for? But yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed with this. So let's go ahead and hook it up to the TV. We'll play another cartridge and then we'll check out some final thoughts. All right, so we've hooked up the Evercade to our television right now. And you can see here we have a nice 720p image going on our television, which also allows us to capture direct footage from this, which I think is very cool. I will say this won't be my preferred way to play the system. You basically hold the system in your hands and use it just as a controller. The screen itself turns off, but because of the HDMI cable that comes out of the top of the system, it gives it a bit of additional weight. And I, you know, it's not a huge deal or anything like that, but it's just, it's not the most comfortable way to play the games, but I want to take a look at Splatterhouse Part 3 or Splatterhouse 3. A lot of people crap on this game. I don't know why. This is one of my favorite Genesis games. Yes, it's a little bit different than the other Splatterhouse games, but I liked it. I like the little cutscenes in the game. I like everything about Splatterhouse 3. So this is the game that I wanted to check out on the big screen for you guys to get a look at the world of Splatterhouse 3, which is definitely one of the best features about this system because Splatterhouse 3, if you get the actual Genesis cartridge, is, is very, very expensive. So let's just hop into the game here. You can see, I mean, everything looks really good so far. I'm actually very close up to the television the way my setup is in order to capture the footage for this. But there is no sort of input lag or anything like that. You know, everything feels as it should. The buttons are very responsive as well. And this, this game is just so awesome. Like, look at how cool this game is. How did they mess up Splatterhouse so bad? If you've never played Splatterhouse 3, it's basically like a maze game where you're trying to find your girlfriend, Jennifer, um, and you have a time limit in which you could do it as well. But this was just, it was very different than the other Splatterhouse games, which were basically just 2D games in which you would move um, from left to right. Whereas this, you could see you have a, a big plane where you can move back and forth. There's really cool boss battles. There's multiple um, entries and multiple doors to go into as well. I'm very, I'm very surprised that there doesn't seem to be any sort of uh, input lag when playing with the television. That was one of my worries that there was going to be some sort of um, issue going with that as, you know, an intermittent thing with the controller, with the system itself being the controller. But no, I mean, everything, everything feels nice and smooth and everything is looking really good. Let's just go ahead and hulk up because, I mean, why not? We're not, we're not going for a full run through of this game or anything like that. Just wanted to show you guys how it looks and how it plays on the television. The sound sounds spot on, you know, very creepy soundtrack and, you know, really cool sort of sound effects for when you're destroying these hideous, ugly, demonic creatures. But I'll say this system is really impressing me. I want to spend some more time with it off camera. Check out the other games and see if there's any sort of issues with those games. Check out the battery life. Like they said, you get about four to five hours. I want to see just how long the battery itself actually lasts to see, you know, how close to that check mark they hit. But you know, it's it's playing the games right. I think the cartridge collection aspect is really cool. The system itself, it seems to be very sturdy and well built. So yeah, I'm going to play around with this a bit more off camera and then give you guys some final thoughts on it. So I've been playing the Evercade for quite a while now, and one of the concerns I had about it was, of course, the battery life. They tout four to five hours on a full charge, and I was able to mostly get those time frames when adjusting the screen brightness from the main menu screen. If you're going with a full brightness screen and the volume all the way up, it can be a bit lower to three and a half to about four hours, but you can adjust it from the main menu. Now, aside from the other nitpicks that I've had in the video, there are two things that I do want to mention that did bother me a bit about this system. 
system. The first thing being when you're playing the game in TV mode, if you unplug the HDMI cable from the system, the system will reset. So it's not exactly like a Nintendo Switch or anything like that, where you could simply just plug it in and plug it out and go about your business. Now, of course, since this system does have save states for all the game, you would simply just save your game and then unplug the system. The system would reset and you could just jump right back into it. But I would have liked to have seen the ability to just get right into the game when it's in handheld mode, when you unplug it from your television, especially if something ends up happening, like maybe your HDMI cable comes out. And the other complaint I have is that the Evercade is designed for the single player experience in mind. And you might be saying to yourself, well, there's games like Double Dragon 2 on there and Clay Fighters. How do you play these games in multiplayer? Well, unfortunately, you cannot. And that's kind of a drawback for me because I think games like Double Dragon 2 are absolutely fantastic to play in local co-op mode. Now, Evercade did say that maybe in the future, an updated system would be able to include multiplayer. And that's why they decided to put these multiplayer based games on the system. But it would have been nice to be able to could uh, add a controller to the Evercade system or find some way to be able to play these games in multiplayer, maybe even link up different Evercade systems. And of course, you have to wonder about the future of the system. There are 10 cartridges available at the launch of the system on April 9th, but how many additional cartridges will be made? Will this system be successful? I do think this will have some measure of success though, because I really like this system. I think they did a really good job with it. The screen is very impressive. All the emulation is spot on, and I really enjoy the cartridge collecting aspect of it as well. Will it be a huge success like something like the Nintendo Switch? No, of course not. But I definitely think it's a very cool niche product for retro gaming fans and retro gaming collectors who are looking for something new to collect for. With the cheap price of cartridges at only $20 a pop, I think this could be somewhat of a success and I'm definitely pretty impressed with this system. So let me know in the comments section down below if you plan on picking up the Evercade system, what you think of everything I showed you, and what you think about the system in general. And once again, I want to give a huge thank you to the folks over at Evercade for sending one early for me to check out. And as always, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out other videos on the channel. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.